it any good is where we have more of a subjective take on whatever the content is. So that's that's pretty much what we do. Do you want to show anything? Um, yeah. is, do we, are we going to do slides? Or should we just... If you want. Um, it's here. Well, I, okay. We'll keep it this format. That's All right. good. Okay. Hi. T-T-W-A. Hi, I'm Jane Clare, and in 09, I developed apps. So that gives me the full circle of coming to Teachers with Apps, which is a review site. Very small, teachers reviewing apps with children, so that we really play the apps, we know what's good, we know what's not, and we only review what we consider to be of the top quality. We don't want to give somebody a poor score. So we email them and we let them know that they're such and such and, and we're, we're making some suggestions to them. And we've just morphed from this very small company making apps, reviewing apps, and now we're doing consulting. And that's really excited. I'm most excited about the manipulatives, the new toys that are coming out that actually interact with the screen. Um, Tiggly, Osmo, Marbotic. Um, they're just really fun to see the t kids get real objects back in their hands that work with the screen. So that's what I'm most excited about right now. All right, and I'm Warren Buckleitner, editor of Children's Technology Review. And I have, uh, we just started, branched off into something called C-TREX. Uh, C-TREX is Children's Technology Review Exchange. And the idea behind that is that it's a two-way uh, conversation. We like to say a re uh, review is the start of a conversation. Uh, we're subscription only, no advertising, and when you, adver when you um, subscribe, you get a monthly issue. It looks like that. And that is not out yet. That's going to be out Monday morning. So uh, that has endless Spanish on the cover. So we always try to pick one amazing product a month and put, feature that. Uh, and then there's 30 reviews that are going to be coming out. And then we, you get a weekly as well. Um, we also consider ourselves teachers. Um, and so the, the uh, shortcut is kickyteacher.com. Uh, you can get into c tracks And you can search uh, as a non-subscriber. That's a review. And this is how we do our ratings. I'm about to show you something that's top secret. And um, I don't want Common Sense Media or Teachers of App starting to use this. We have a meter we actually use. What you do is you shine the meter at the app icon, and it immediately gives you, it generates a one to five star rating. It's amazing. You need to have this. $59.99. $59.99. You can pick it up at the door outside. And I'm really excited about it. Visa, MasterCard. But wait, there's more. Are there any rating tags? It's, what's that? Did it, did it already get reviewed? Can we see ratings on the CPU? Sure, yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to show you how, how it works. Uh, it takes care of your big confounds. It takes care of your uh, platform, your child licensed characters, the life philosophy. Um, so the, the reason I'm showing this is kind of to poke fun at ourselves that you can't accurately slap a number on something as complicated as a bundle of culture. Uh, the holy grail of Quantitative measurement, and I'm turning into an educational psychologist, is validity and reliability. And that's what you learn in measurement. And so you try your best. And that's what Children's Technology Review Exchange is. Um, reliability is, are they accurate each time you use it? So if you reviewed something in 2001, would it still have the same score? And external validity is the holy grail, and that is, I trust those. And so the readers have to find validity in that, which they sometimes don't. And I think that this kind of pops it all into perspective, which is best. And these could easily be apps. And you'd each have your own scale. To, to form your scale, and I like to flip the whole process around, you start thinking about your bias. And that's where it gets back to theory. And for me, I'm a constructivist. This is my bias. And each of these guys, BF Skinner's in there, 
and Vygotsky and Montessori, they would each have a particular rating and they'd have very strong opinions about the apps that you just saw. And so it's very important to know what you like before you can assign a rating. So I kind of see the whole thing as a, see each one has their own, they, I got them to buy. You realize that $59.99 each, getting money out of Piaget was not easy. And so uh, if you want to read about it, there's a chapter in a book that I wrote for with Chip Donahue. What would Maria Montessori say about the iPad? Theoretical frameworks for children's interactive media. And um, it really spells out and it, it goes into more detail about this. So the way my approach to rating is that you try your best, you start a conversation, and that good information is lubrication for change. So if I can give you a good review that's accurate, it doesn't mix up things like um, you know how many activities and kind of what it does, that you can make a better choice. And that is my story. And I can we can uh, turn it over to you guys for questions, but um, I'm just curious if you if you guys would like to react to the stuff I just said, or if anybody else wants to as well. I've been waiting for that um, meter Apple to come. Meter? Yeah, just, I've been waiting. It's like six weeks now. Did you pay? Did you pay for it? You did. Yeah. We'll work. We'll get. It's in the mail. Okay. It's in the mail. Yeah. I really like what you said about coming to coming to the reviews with a specific framework, and that there's you know there's a measure of objectivity that is we all strive for, and I think to recognize what framework we're coming from is really important. So I like that. I'm glad you like that. Yes. And the magic of an app, you only know until you give the child the tablet. You never know the magic until the child will show you. Yep, and you, I think we often forget how powerful this medium is with when you, you know, it really always does come down to the child and it's great to have, have them here. They'll find the apps that they, that, that delivers for them that, you know, uh, they're very good at finding it. Um, but let, why don't I ask you guys, or we, we can all respond to what kind of thing, um, how do, I guess you guys, you might want to say, how do you get a product review? And last year I did a, a session on how to work with the press, and that might be a good place to start. It's like, how do you get something into Common Sense Media? What, what's the best way? Um, there's a general email address that you can send an email to, and um, I see most of those and since I'm here you can also just get my email address um, and you can email me directly and we generally don't we don't review anything that's in beta so we wait till it's ready to go um, and then we review and it takes a few months generally for it to get live teachers with apps what can we send you in an email can I send you a PDF or um... generally in an email I would just want sort of the, the basic story if there's a link that already exists, anything I can see, um, video, so I just get a general sense of what it's about. Video is really helpful, I think. A, yes. A, a short, just clip, uh, because you, we, it takes time to install stuff. And if you can just take a quick, quick look and show you show what it does, it really helps. Yeah, and also, uh, just a follow-up question. So I, I've seen the website, and we just have a time to so when you publish your content, is it just on the website, or do you also like other places that the information is published? There? We do. There's actually a kids media app, um, so that's available. And um, our content, we have partners, so there's our content appears uh, certain places. Netflix is one. Uh, the X one, the Comcast box appears there. Can I just follow up real quick on the video idea? So, not to put you on the spot, Warren, but I just. Uh, pitch Ronnie to you in an email and put a video in there by putting the link and the yeah. image that also was the link. Is that what we should be doing or is there something else? Because it's, you know, it's 2015 and it's still hard to put videos in emails. <laughs> yeah, no, just a link. Um, I, I like uh, a text email, no fancy stuff, and I just, I like nuts and bolts. I like name of the title. Uh, I mean, look at our, here's what you do if you've ever been in a college class. 
you give the professor what they ask for, exactly. Title, name, right? Look at our review. What do we what do we what do we print? Name of app, publisher, just fill in the blanks. And so that's all I want. And I don't want formatting. I want information. And I want to be a week ahead of common sense meeting. <laughs> all right? So now there is a degree of seriousness to that. You should uh, there's a couple companies that are really good at sort of making you feel special, um, but saying, you know, we're sending these out, uh, wanted you to get a sneak preview of what's coming, because uh, I don't like surprises, and I want to kind of know when things are coming out, so it's uh, stale information is not good, you want to be, it needs to be fresh. Would it be a good idea to, let's just say I, Apple approves my apps, I could put it up that day, but I decide, okay, I'm going to hold off two weeks and I'm going to send you guys an email. That's what Connie's doing. You start talking mm -hmm. about it and then... Yeah, because there's, there's very few things in life you can control. Your release date is one of them. So make that work to your advantage. Take the two weeks, do some groundwork, send out some codes to people. Yeah, I think that makes a lot more sense. But I'm the worst person at PR in the world, so in terms of... No, none of you have heard of seed tricks, right? No. Thanks, Scott. What I find amazing is people will say, will you review my app? And there's not a title or a link or even a promo code. And so you're like, uh, you write back, like, yeah, could you give me some more information? Like, it's either too much or not enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a question. Bam. How do you see the future of educational application? Huh? <laughs> we start drinking wine tomorrow. <laughs> That's a wine question. <laughs> That's not. Wait, so say that again. How do I see the future? Of educational application for mobile devices. How it will be developed? For now, there are a lot of them. Them very good, but you know the sales are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's hard to make money doing this? No, it's not possible to make money. <laughs> <laughs> but for sure, future is digital. So, how yeah, do you see how it will go? Well, it's fun to have people like Mark and, you know, some real legends who are walking around here and. I, it'd be great to ask them that question as well, but um, one thing that has struck me, being, having done this since 1982, is that this is the future right here. We've got the, the device, you know, the tablet. It doesn't matter if it's Android, but when you think about what this has compared with what we had 10 years ago, now we can give every child this power. And you saw Astro Polo, you saw some of the aesthetics. So we've got the, the pipeline now, and it's incredibly, incredibly exciting. And I think it's, it's nearly criminal that architects, bankers, um, even the police officer in the car has better technology in their squad car than a first grade classroom. And so we've got to start getting this technology in, in where the kids are. And we're, it'll happen. And it's very exciting. So I think we're living in the future now. I think this is the future. I think the stuff that Lucas showed us, uh, you just saw it. And with the, you know, you've seen Oculus, you've seen Google Cardboard. A lot of amazing things are happening. So um, I've never been more excited. I, we've got the tools, and I think now it's content. And I would love Google, to, Google Play to start giving Apple more competition so that you guys that are in more demand. So. Uh, that, see, that was a hard question. That was, that was a big question. No, of course. Yes. Um, now, we're going to get Google, uh, we're going to get App Analytics now, and we, yes. we will be able to see where sales are coming from. So what I would like to will you have to post a special link to do that? No, just uh, will show. Will, will that change the market of the revenues? Because um, now we will be able to see where downloads are coming from. 
All I see is um, um, they come from nowhere. It must be um, word of mouth or something. It's really strange because every information I get is is really. I think it's Filipino, so it might not be valid. We're using it. Yeah, App Analytics. I'm so excited about, and I hope that we have a big discussion yeah. about it at Duster Magic because that I think it will start changing the market with regard to the media because what we're able to do now is create a custom URL. So let's just say I want to put out um, information on Facebook and then through buy sell ads I might do it to Smart Apps for Kids and Best Apps for Kids and you know 15 other places. I can create custom URLs for those different places run all of my ads and then even though those different places have different amounts of viewers per month I can now see are those viewers targeted enough that they're actually translating into installs so I can now go into app analytics and see for those custom URLs how many downloads did I actually get from each of those different sites I'm super excited about it and I think that it, it is going to change where people advertise and where they request reviews because if I were to see that all my, you know, lots and lots of my downloads are coming from Common Sense Media or coming from somewhere, I would be really then pushing that particular outlet for my app. So I'll, I'm, I'll be very interested to see that. But I had a question for um, Christine. Well, one thing I, I want to respond to that because if it's a true review outlet, we don't care. And, you know, if you, if you get two downloads, we really don't care because we have no financial, we don't want your ad money. Uh, if you publish, our, our take is if you publish something and you push it to kids, we're going to be out there looking at it. And once, you know, so when you push the, twig, the trigger, I mean, you're going to sell something, it's fair game for a review. So our answer, I mean, our, my answer to that is we don't care. In the case, the others will have, like, there's a lot of them asking for $150, dollars right. for a review. Right. So it's nice yeah. that um, it right. gets to the public. You're using the subscription model, but most people aren't. So, um, and that was actually it's a related question because, Christine, you had said in a few months, then, you know, the information will go live. And what I'm interested to know, sort of, on your end, um, kind of what, what pressures you have in terms of, as a developer, you know, Apple wants us to make a big splash at launch. And so we're having to kind of plan all of our efforts to get the word out at launch. Um, but, but what happens is there's many sites that it might take months before a movie goes live, but now what's happening is sites are charging money more and more and more, and the prices are going higher and higher, to get an expedited review. And so what ends up happening is there's a real push now. Like, for, as a small developer, I don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to pay for expedited reviews. And yet, there's an urgency to get that information out to the public. So I'm curious to see what your response is to that and how, you know, how we can sort of better make those relationships work. Um. I, on my end, I think it's just sort of a sheer volume. Right. Um, yeah. So just the, the volume of reviews that um, we have to go through, get written, edit, you know, go through the entire process, I think that's what holds us back from being able to, to snap them out in a way that's timely and works best for you. And honestly, I don't know what the answer is. Um, but I understand that's a problem. I mean, we're not charging money, but we're too slow for the process. So that is a struggle. I, I want you to remember the validity and reliability. And the problem with a site that's collecting money for an expedited review, what if it's a bad review? And, you know, are you going to be... Uh, so, so I think that... Um, the iTunes ratings has a very large reliability problem. You know, you don't, you can't trust. I mean, I think they're very useful, but I think that um, you, you just can't tell whether uh, a product has been stocked, the, the review's been contaminated or not. So, um, there, I guess, I guess, I, I would kind of see that money as, as advertising money. You know, 
just use it as wisely as you can. Is there a, any journalistic ethics or anything involved when it comes to taking money for a review? Um, even if it's an expedited thing, I mean, you still, if, if it's a business, are you going to want more reviews expedited for that? I'm just saying, I, I can see a conflict of interest. That. How much money you have? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say conflict of interest is if you, if you sell expedited and you get paid by it doing that, do you want that company to come back to you for another review and another purchase? Right. And, um, so, and so are you going to give that bad review? Right. Or are you going to kind of say, oh, kind of like... The tricky word is the expedite. Yeah. Well, so here's, here's my... For, for yeah. My two cents on that concept is that if you want to have a quality site that is a quality resource for educators and you're really passionate about what you do, then there, it, it, the ethics just go away because we only want to review what's great. We don't want the sour stuff on our site. We're going to write back to that developer and say, you need to change this and this. So I know it's tricky business. Most of, most of that code reviews really don't move the move needle for traffic. It, it's unless you're selling to organizations, for schools for example, those reviews come into picture. But for consumers it's really it, the easiest way to say it without looking at the app analytics is look at the review sites, uh, you know, what is that Google page rank? Most of them are like four to six, right? So that means what two to four or whatever. They're not gonna drive much traffic. So if you're thinking the rating is going to drive traffic, it's not. It, it's more of a giving a consumer a, a different insights into your app, or for yourself only as an app. So to so echo one of the slides I had last year is the best way to get press is to have news. Mm -hmm. And the best PR is a good product. And having a product that you're, you know, and I think you saw some today, that are going to get great press because they are good products. So you got to remember that if you've got if you've got a, a bad product, it's you're going to you have an uphill battle. It's a problem. Can I ask how you're all funded as a company? In what leads you to do reviews? Because if you, um, you're not taking money for reviews, so it must be some other way that you're receiving the funding to do so. We're a nonprofit, so we have business partners, and we also have um, funders, foundations. Consumer companies? Um, no, those are the business partners. So that's a separate okay. department. Do they send apps to be reviewed by you? Um, if they do, then we have a disclaimer on the review that says this is one of our business partners, but those are very few and far between. Teachers with Apps is pretty much pre-revenue at this point. But it's been a great um, stepping stone for me because I'm now in my second career as a consultant. And I don't really like that word consultant, but I'm having so much fun working with app developers and helping them make a better product. Uh, that's where we've come. And it just happened to be happenstance because of first developing, Pretty have, have a pretty good idea what's going on and then coming full circle. Um, it just, everything just fell into place. So it wasn't, it was never any intentions of this is our model. We're teachers. We don't have a business model. <laughs> <laughs> but you kind of got a master's degree in apps. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I got, did get one master's degree in technology, actually. Uh, those guys are a nonprofit. We're a no profit. Um, <laughs> we're, we're actually, I actually worked for 10 years at a nonprofit, so I understood it very well and started a for profit. And th with the thought that it, I could be more independent as a for profit that sold very specific product. And I, then I'd have to be motivated to make it really good. And so that's been the model. And then 10 years ago or so I started writing for the New York Times as a freelancer and I still am a freelancer so I I use those guidelines and they're really great if you go to the New York Times and kind of see what you can and can't do 
It rules out junkets. It rules out just the obvious forms of contaminants of objectivity. And I find that those to be really, uh, and so I use those and uh, in sort of stipulating what I can and can't do. Um, we're we're subscription-based. And I think the thing that we try to do is be academic. We follow an academic model. So we cite references. Our, our motive is to try to move the field forward with good information. And uh, that is the best way to serve kids. And you'll see that kind of the flavor. So we don't really have a problem being very critical on specific products. And you'll, you'll read some of our language. And sometimes people write and say, we really want to, you to review our product. And I say, no, you don't. You really don't want us to review your product. You're not going to like what it says. And you really don't want us to review your product. But if they keep pushing, you'll get a review. And um, it can be an ugly thing when it happens. But it's, it's, it has to be said. And it's, and it's a valuable thing for our industry because it, it makes us push yeah. harder and it makes, you know, I, I've found people I, 18 months I've been saying, okay, I'm going to release it by the end of the month. So by the end of the month, I didn't think it was ready to go out and be reviewed. Look, the, the, the thing I, I think I can speak for all of us, and this is really important, is that we're people and that um, uh, you should, if you don't agree with a rating or review, you should. Uh, speak up. Uh, I, I got a call yesterday from a, my phone rang, you know, hello, yeah, you reviewed our app and it's all wrong. I said, okay, <laughs> let's open it up. So we looked at it together and I said, read it back to me, tell me exactly what's where the errors are. And he found three valid errors. Um, we had a spirited discussion about what multiple choice means. <laughs> And um, I think that we both walked away from the, the review was more accurate and the rating didn't change, but he was happier. Um, you know, don't be afraid to, to um, speak up because we're all trying and we all make mistakes. And I always say, um, nobody knows your, <clears throat> your app better than you do. You know how much content's there. And if you see a mistake, you should holler about it. You guys would dis you guys would agree with that. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Because no one wants wrong information. No one wants to be panned. Yeah. So how many app reviewers are out there now? Just three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> I I got a actually I got plugged by a PR person who's trying to sell me a service for re app reviewers, saying there are 600 app reviewers out there. And I think there's a very little difference between a catalog and an app review, and a true review. And I think that's more of a catalog idea. And I have to bring up one point going back. I've been using Google Analytics for years, and I just changed my host to be WordPress engine. And I have all these overages, and I talked to them yesterday, and they're saying, you don't have that much traffic. You have this much traffic. And I'm like, I do? And they're like, yes. I said, you sure? I, doesn't say that on Google Analytics. So I'd just be aware of that app analytics maybe not being necessarily, you know, who do I believe? Hmm. Um, there is so many apps. How do you choose when it is not expedited that review? How do you choose which apps you will review? Because it's you know, I remember when I was really uh, when I released the World Wizard app. Uh, there was a feature by you and by uh, and by Apple, but there was no over review. I didn't have review of oversight. It was like, and I sent a lot to a lot of people, and it was not reviewed. And so I always wondering how you choose how, especially in common sense media, because I don't know if you can request a review now, but before you could not. And uh, so, how do how you deal with this issue? Please. It is very difficult, and I'm sure a lot of um, great apps fall through the cracks because of the volume. At Common Sense, it's a little different because we're trying to cover um, 
we do cover the top 10. We try to cover the ones that parents are going to look for. So if there's a, a chatting app that's getting a lot of buzz in the news because it's terrible, we cover that so that parents can look it up and yeah. find out about it. Um, so it's more of an obligation as a resource. But I do, as much as I can, I try to surface things. And I do, since I work right upstairs, I get information from Colab occasionally about what's happening down here. Um, which is great, but you absolutely can um, email the site, and um, I get a lot of those requests, so please feel free. Um, but I know it's not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You should have thousands of reviews, <laughs> and you have to check every app, and to know if it is really a good app, you have to spend time to understand the app, so it's really tricky, I think, yeah. For, yes. For everybody. Yeah. yeah, not enough bandwidth. You have multiple reviewers, right? We have multiple reviewers, but I am the I am the consumer editor, so there's one of me. I have yes. And how many writers do you have? Um, I have. There's some overlap, but I would say right now I probably have seven or eight reviewers in play. Um, and again, there's some overlap with the education side of our site. Graphite also. Um, but it's not a lot. You know, it's not, we can't churn them out as much as we would like. We do 10,000 each. We're, we have 24,000 reviews on the site right now. Total. Cool. So it's a lot. But it's not just apps, but I mean, every total review, yes, 24,000. Um, how, how is that call made? An app comes in, it could come under the guise of it being a consumer product, but it is accidentally educational. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like who, you know, do you guys talk about, well, this really falls better in your camp than my camp? Or? Yes, and, and we do cross reviews. So there'll be a lot of reviews that I'll do for parents, but it'll also be on Graphite, teacher facing. So um, it doesn't necessarily have to be under education in the App Store to have the learning potential. Surface. But that would be a different review with a different rubric or something if it was under education versus consumer. Well, we have, so we have our basic content grid, but then we also have a learning rating that uses a 15-point rubric. And so anything that seems to have educational potential that will score fairly well, so we don't give a learning rating to everything. I think it started that way and they've moved away from that because they don't want to ding apps that aren't meant for learning at all. But if there seems to be some educational potential, then I'll say let's do a learning rating on this because it's not under education, but they could be used for learning. I was hoping someone would talk, would, I, I've always waited for someone to call me on the whole learning versus fun thing, number, and not, not enough people do. And I think you should. I think you should say, what the heck are you talking about saying that a coloring thing is learning? What do you mean? Mario Party is learning. You know, it, if you look at our review, it's got one of the highest education scores, Mario Party. Okay, I think kids learn more. And I, I'm waiting for someone to question me so I can argue with them. Because, again, you know, a review is the start of a discussion. So I think uh, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Mario Party. You. Don't listen to him. Um, what the, getting your question about what we look for, we want, uh, no, nothing makes my day more than to find a uh, small publisher who's got an amazing product. And for like six months, I saw uh, Toka Tea Party, and I thought it was a, um, from some, some small island somewhere. I thought Toka Boca, I couldn't figure it out. Who's making it was the helicopter one, and I, we love the helicopter one. And I, I saw this, the opportunity for spatial relations. So I saw this pipeline. I could see kids flying that around a preschool. So we ran a review immediately. And then they came out with another, like, Toka Tea Party. And then I knew there was genius. And that's what I love. I, I don't really care. I, I want to find the genius behind the product. And that's why I found a lot of people for industrial management is I want to, I dig to find the geniuses. When I, the way I found Darren was uh, his math arena won the Bologna New Media Prize back in 1997, and they sent Darren to pick up the prize. And so I didn't know, so I don't really know or care that much about the people as much as the ideas. 
And, um, but I think the, the point is, I just also reviewed uh, SpongeBob's Something Party uh, that has a lot of in-app sales, and it's a, a purchased app. So you pay buck ninety nine, then there's in-app sales. And I want to correctly identify that so parents know exactly what's going on. I also care a lot about the practice. If I, because I see that whole model um, morphing, and I want to figure it out. So I'll I'll do a review of that to try to figure figure that out. And one of the exercises I sort of fantasized about um, on the airplane in here is just the three of us talk about the same ad. Mm -hmm. and uh, maybe compare notes as to what's good or bad about it, but um, that would be fun. Um, anyway. Be fun. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, in-app purchase, and you know, I mean, there's a lot of negativity in the kids' app market about it. Uh, I guess, how do you feel about the freemium model becoming a thing? I mean, when it's when it's responsibly held, like a try before you buy kind of thing, as opposed to you know things like Smurfs or whatever. Um, it, I mean, how do you, is that going to lower your rating instantly because there's in-app purchase, or um, I guess uh, talk about in-app purchase? <laughs> um, it, it would not lower our rating immediately. I would say, I mean, as a parent, I prefer to just dole out the money and then not worry about it again. And I know as a reviewer, if I see lots of microtransactions, I can, yeah, we surface that for a parent. There's a consumerism element on our content grid. Um, because you have to anticipate that your kid is going to be, you know, I want this and I want that and I want that. And that isn't, doesn't make for a great experience if a kid gets frustrated, if it, you know, it, it can muddy the waters of the quality of the app. Um, so my personal take on that is I would rather just pay the money and be done, even if it's more money. If it's worth it, I'm going to pay it. From a parent's point of view, I feel like there's still half the market or majority of the market where the parents just won't buy anything up front. They, they want a try before you buy or, you know, they want to, you know, some, lots of people just will not pay uh, for an app up front. They want free and then maybe I'll pay in that purchase. But, mm -hmm. So I guess, uh, I mean, you, you know, as, as a parent, you want to pay premium, but how do you reconcile with the parents that don't want to pay premium? You know? I think it depends on the transaction. So if you're talking about you get one level for free, and then you have to pay a little bit more for this level and a little bit more for this level, um, if there's a delay to play model where you have to pay or wait, then that can, that, that can be problematic for a kid. Um, but if it's free to play and then one purchase to unlock, I think that's different. That's a different model. Um, so again, you know, I think lots of mini transactions doesn't work well. For, for